integral functions and how to graph them. Um, the first thing we're going to do is to try to get a, an understanding of reciprocal functions is we need to get an idea how 1 over x behaves when x gets bigger or when x gets smaller. So let's start off and uh, look at uh, when x gets small. If x is progressively becoming a smaller and smaller number, what effect does that have on 1 over x? Well, let's just look at a couple of comparisons and see. For example, if x was, say, um, 1 half. So we would have 1 over 1 half. And we would simplify this complex fraction, perhaps by uh, multiplying the top and bottom by 2. And we would get 2 over 1. So we would notice that we get a value of 2. And then perhaps we want to examine, well, what if we make um, x a little bit smaller, maybe something like 1 tenth. So we have 1 over 1 tenth. What happens here? Well, we'll multiply the top and bottom by 10. And we're going to get a 1 on the bottom and a 10 on the top. And we notice we're getting a bigger number. So the rule kind of is this. As x gets progressively smaller, 1 over x gets progressively larger. Um, so we're just going to make a note of that right here. 1 over x gets big. Now what about if we look at what happens when x becomes a larger number? Just make a little room, see what happens there. If x is progressively getting bigger, then we're going to be looking at <coughs> things like 1 over 2. Okay, well that's 1 half. If x gets a little bit bigger, we'll get something like 1 tenth. And what we can see is that 1 over x is becoming progressively smaller. So when x gets large, then 1 over x gets small. Now, where will that help us when we do some graphing? Or are we going to look at some comparisons here of um, graphs to their reciprocal graphs? And I'm going to do a specific example to show you what we're talking about. So make a little bit of room. And don't need the title anymore. So we're going to look at some sort of a graph. Perhaps we'll start off with a nice linear graph. That looks like this. Maybe this line will go through, uh, say, 1, 0. And uh, maybe we'll have it go with, uh, with a slope of 1. So it more or less does something like this. OK, we're trying to get that so you can see it. All right, there's our line. And we're just going to call that f of x. Now, when we're saying we want to graph reciprocal functions, what we're going to try and graph is 1 over f of x. Okay, remember that a reciprocal is when something gets flipped over. So instead of f of x, we're going to try and graph 1 over f of x. So let's see how um, the knowledge that we acquired just previously might help us <clears throat> draw a good graph. Let's see what we have here. Well, let's start off with one very important observation. The original function value at this location when x is 1, okay, so this point here, the y value, or f of x, is 0. Now, when we go to reciprocate this, we're going to get 1 over 0. It doesn't exist. What does that tell us for our graph? Uh, those are locations where we have vertical asymptotes. So I'm just going to extend a nice little dotted line down here. This is where there actually is no function value for the reciprocal here. So it's what we call a vertical asymptote. Now, um, that kind of breaks our graph into two sections. So we're going to look at the positive sections, a little bit easier to look at. And what we're going to look at is all these different function values here, though they're all positive numbers. Now, when I say function values, I'm talking about the y values. All of these points here have positive y values and they're progressively getting bigger. 
Now, what does that mean as far as the reciprocals of these numbers go? Well, for example, this point here looks like it might have a y value of one half. The reciprocal of that is two. So that point would correspondingly in our reciprocal graph be up at two, sort of like maybe up here or something. Now, as these get bigger, the y values, their reciprocals are going to get smaller. So as we move off to the right, we're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller numbers. But these are still going to be positive numbers. So they are not going to um, ever go negative. So what we're going to have happening is something like this. Okay, We have a horizontal asymptote he um, heading off to the right. Now, similarly, as we try to put the squeeze on this and we look at what's happening in between here and this, this dotted line, these little tiny fractions are positive fractions and their reciprocals are going to be bigger and bigger positive numbers. So we're going to have uh, our graph going up like this. It's going to progressively go up to infinity, but never quite um, ever touch this dotted line. It just gets closer and closer to it what we call a vertical asymptote. So that's the positive section of this when we draw its reciprocal. What about the negative section? Well, this point here is an important point. This is 0, negative 1. This is called an invariant point. And what happens is the y value here, negative 1, when we reciprocate it, we go 1 over negative 1, we still have negative 1. This point won't move. That's still a point on the graph of the reciprocal. But what about the other parts of it here? Well, in between here, we have a bunch of negative y values, and they're between negative 1 and 0. So they're fractions, negative fractions. When these things get reciprocated, they become large negative numbers. So this thing's going to head off down towards negative infinity. So here we have this sort of thing happening down there. And similarly, in this part here, we have negative numbers like negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, that kind of y value. And its reciprocal is going to be negative 1 half, negative 1 third, negative 1 quarter. So it's going to get closer and closer to the x-axis as well. So again, this horizontal asymptote. So there is our reciprocal graph uh, given this particular function. So, let's look at a couple more examples because it takes a little bit of practice um, to get comfortable drawing these reciprocal graphs. Okay, let's, uh, let's start with a fresh new one here and see what we can do with it. Okay, <clears throat> in this next one, I'm going to draw kind of a funny looking function. I'm going to put a bunch of little sections together here. And what I've decided to do would be, um, oh, we'd go up, uh, say, to there. And we're going to cross on the y-axis here. And we'll cross the x-axis, uh, sort of reach down and get to here. Okay, that doesn't look quite right. Let me raise that point to here. It didn't look quite nice and straight. Okay, so do something like that, and maybe we'll extend it a little bit further. We'll go down to there, and then maybe we'll just go straight across, nice horizontal line, and do the same thing maybe over here. So that would be a kind of a funny looking function, but a function nonetheless. And what we're going to do again, our challenge is to graph 1 over f of x. So, let's do that right underneath. So, here's what we're going to produce. Now, the best way to start these is to look for vertical asymptotes and sketch those in. And that gives you kind of an idea where the function is broken up, okay? where your graph is going to be broken into different pieces. And here we see a y value of 0. So, the reciprocal of that is undefined, which tells us we have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so there's my two sections of the graph. Now, um, the other thing that I see happening here, if I do maybe the right side of this graph first, 
Here we have a bunch of negative y values, so the reciprocals are going to be negative numbers, so we're going to be below the x-axis. But I see here all of the y values along here are negative 1, and the reciprocals are still negative 1. So from this section onwards here, the reciprocal graph looks the same. It doesn't look any different. So what's happening that's kind of strange is only in this little zone here. Now here I have negative fractions. The reciprocals of those are going to be larger negative numbers. So we're going to be going down like so. All right, we got one section of our graph already done. Now we just got to do the positive section here. Now uh, a good way to start this as well is maybe we'll do the straight line part first. These uh, points along here, this part of the original graph, has all y values of 2. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So all along there, some marks on here, we're going to be at 1 half. So from negative 1 onwards, we're going to be at a y value of 1 half. Okay. So again, all I've got to do is fiddle a little bit with the rest of the part of this. And uh, there's an invariant point right there. That value has uh, 1. This point here has a y value of 1, so it isn't going to move. And then we see we're getting basically smaller and smaller y values. And the reciprocals are therefore going to become larger and larger numbers. So what are we going to have happening here? Well, we're going to be roaring up to this vertical asymptote. And there we have it. So there's our graph. Um, okay, I think we're ready to tackle a very complicated, miserable example. At least I think it is. And, uh, and then I think we've got the idea of these reciprocal graphs. Okay. So what are we going to tackle this time? Well, I think looks so innocent because it's an old friend, it's a parabola. And I've decided we'll go down four, make our vertex there, we'll go over two, make those the x-intercepts. And so we're going to have a parabola that looks kind of like this. All right, looks like an old friend, but could be a little more complicated when we go to do the reciprocal function. So let's see, we'll do that right below here. Okay, this is what we're after, 1 over f of x. So again, I'm really examining the y values of these points here and kind of seeing, well, where are they going to be in the re reciprocal graph? Why don't we start with the vertex? Well, we know where that guy's going to be. Uh, instead of being at negative 4, it's going to be at negative 1 fourth. It's going to be like way up there. Okay, so that's kind of a good little foothold. We also see some y values that are 0. And so these are going to be vertical asymptotes. Let's sketch those in. Okay. And same thing down here. All right, now, we've got all kinds of uh, negative numbers in here. <clears throat> and if we think about their reciprocals, uh, any of these that were way up here that were little negative fractions are going to become large negative numbers, okay, like negative 10 and stuff like that. These ones that have negative 1 are going to be invariant points, so they're not going to move. So actually, I could sketch that in. Right about here, I just kind of eyeball it. There's a negative 1, and over here there's a negative 1. Okay. So what did I say these little fractions are going to become very large negative numbers? So this would seem to be roaring down like so. And the same thing's true of this little section up here. We have little negative fractions, and the reciprocals will become large negative numbers. And then if we just think of joining the dots, we've got to get over to this point here, well, all this stuff in here are going to become these numbers in between. To 
convince ourselves of that, we could try a test one. Like, what about this point, say, about there? Well, this point here has a, a y value of negative a half. So when we think of where is it in our drawing here, this point here should be somewhere around negative a half. And you can see that is roughly at negative a half in y value. So I think we're pretty happy with that. We've even tried a little test point. Now what about this section here? We've got n positive numbers as we um, look past our vertical asymptote. We've got positive numbers here. And they're getting progressively larger, which means that the whole thing is going to be getting progressively smaller. Um, well, starting large, I guess, and progressively, uh, progressively getting smaller. So uh, these little fractions here, these are things like one-tenth. Well, they're going to be way up here, ten. And then as we get a little bit higher, we're going to get numbers like one, and that will be invariant, it won't move. So I think what we're going to have happening, just to make a long story short, something like that. Okay, um, we have these small fractions going way up to infinity, and as we get bigger and bigger y values, um, they're going to become very, very small positive numbers. So we have a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. And basically the same thing happening over on the other side here. So there we have it. There's our rather complicated reciprocal graph of this particular function. And with that, I think we're going to stop for now, and um, we'll catch you later.